And how you doing? Welcome to the show today. It's the beginning of the week and everybody hates the beginning of the week. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button over on YouTube and Facebook as well as listen to us in the car over on iTunes and Spotify. Good news! Good news, good news. MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com is playing 24 hours of music right now. Yes, the station is coming along, baby. September 1st, we're going to have... The Wake and Bake Show. Hell yeah, man. We're going to have some fun over on the radio station. Uncensored. (laughs) Again, you can go over there and listen to MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. We got Hard Rock Blues, the whole nine yards. Very awesome music, let me tell you. Anyway, today's show. Today's show is as... I don't know, has an interesting subject uh, for the monologue, as well as a editorial that was written about it, the decline of motorcycle club membership. And this one was from Long Rider. He's a subscriber, a real good friend of the sh- show. And, you know, it don't apply to, say, the Outlaw Clubs or the 99 Percenter Clubs. It's not what it was talking about. But I can see the correlation between the type of clubs. One of the things that it was talking about was a shift in society's views. And yes, there has been a huge shift. You know, for example, in the 90s, you know, I'm just going to talk from personal experience. I, you know, I can't talk about the 70s or any of that 80s because I wasn't, you know, active then. I was just a little twerp. But the way we view things compared to today's society is a whole different ball game. Whole different ball game. Clubs were huge back then. You know, you wanted to get into the club uh, when you first got a bike, the whole nine yards. You know, you were drawn to that type of thing. But as generations go, their viewpoints always change, and we're seeing it today in 2020. It's funny. You know, I've heard it all the time. I hear it all the time anyway. You know, this is 2020, this ain't the 90s, this ain't the year, year early 2000s, it's a lot different now. And I got to agree, because why? Because the thinking is totally different. Some of the stuff that I say or the way I think is foreign to a lot of these new jacks. It's really foreign. You know, it, it, the one thing I get busted on all the time is about women in my time it was sit in the corner shut the hell up and don't speak why because wars were started over women that are still going on today a lot of blood spilled a lot of people thrown in the joint because of what one woman would say and in most you know, I can say 99% are clubs, mom and pops, and of course the one percenter clubs, is this is still very true, man, very true. Who wants to go to war because some woman got drunk and started talking stupid? It was also the thinking, you know, we learned, my generation learned from the Vietnam generation, was that women were there to be seen and not heard. Or to have some fun with. I'm talking that. You're talking, you know what? I used to cringe when I seen a woman ride a bike. Because it used to be, hey, you were sitting on the back of the bike. So, a lot of people, they get in my ass because of that one. Another thing was living the life 24-7, 365 days a year. Yeah, we did our hustles on the side, did what we had to do to make the money, but you were usually around people. It was funny, when I was first coming up through the first club, we actually, everybody on one side of the apartment building was club members. 
we even stayed by each other back then. Party at night, you know, there's this creek in uh, the back, you know, smoke our 420 up and just get stupid. Have all kinds of stuff at the bar, go to the bar, get stupid and fight. And it was a great time. You know, we had no worries whatsoever in the world. Actually, I talked about that in my book, uh, New Age of Biking and Brotherhood. I really talked about, you know, some of the stuff the way it was back then, uh, the way we thought. Nowadays, it's more standoffish, if you will. Yeah, everybody, won't, you know, you got a lot of people who still want to get clubs. Yeah, you got the pop-up clubs and stuff. Uh, but it's a whole different society within the scene now. It's a whole different subculture. A lot of people nowadays don't want to follow the protocols because they were raised to believe they didn't have to. It's not until they get ran up on where they say, oh, sh crap, you know, this ain't what we thought it was. Or they'll just come back and say, you know what, you do something, I'll call the cops. In my day, you never call the cops, man. You just handled your business and whoever won, won. Or if you got in a fight afterwards, you had a drink. Uh, it, it was that type of thinking. But now it's run to the cops right away. Also, I always talk about that line where, hey, you know, bikers are one side, cops are on the other, cops, you know, never wanted to be bikers, but even that has changed. The blow up of law enforcement motorcycle clubs is horrendous and something that you really wouldn't have seen back then. You know, you had the Blue Knights, you had a couple, you had like City Heat, but other than that, it wasn't a big Thing. You know, and there sure to hell wasn't any, you know, law enforcement clubs that would mix in uh, bikers that weren't cops or any of that crap. Yeah, there's always been the firefighter clubs and them clubs. I'll be the first one to admit the firefighter clubs. I support 100%, man, because everybody knows I love my firefighters. Uh, so they were awesome. So, you know, going back to 2020, it's like a whole different attitude of the way it should be, you know, because I, I watch some uh, YouTube channels. I li you know, mostly I listen to the radio. I'll listen to Spotify, the podcast over there from the biker stuff, the, you know, channels that actually do it. And by the way, Corey Graff's really kicking butt with his uh, podcast and his show that's going to be on the radio. He's going to be on Spotify uh, pretty soon, uh, uh, all the good stuff. Uh, but anyway, their shows are a lot different than my show. See, I believe in just being real. Putting it out there, seeing what people think, debates, all that good stuff. And that's why I got a lot of freaking haters out there. Boy, do I got the haters. One of these days, I should just open all the emails and go through them with you guys over on the YouTube and Facebook uh, about some of the stuff is said. Uh, yeah, I get a lot of club members that get pissed because I, you know, quote, propagate uh, mainstream media. Well, no. I put the story out there and give comments where, hey, I'm actually promoting the ideal of clubs giving their side of the story. So it ain't like that. But I'm still going to get them type of haters. The kids nowadays, you know, and you know what? There was funny. Uh, somebody says, well, why you hate Harley Davidson? You got a Harley. Uh, and I think I addressed that issue. But let's go move on for that and I'll get back to that one. They have mostly sports bikes. They're, you know, you can uh, blame Black Dragon for this one. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the movie Biker Boys that really showed how everything mixes together in what the sport bike clubs are like nowadays. Again, whole different set of uh, thinking. They're doing their own thing. They're not into, say, the three-piece patch and the biker rallies. You know, if you notice, a lot of the rallies in Laconia is going on now, and I'm going to be talking about that in the news, is they do everything foreign to what we do. 
You know, we're out there drinking, partying, you know, you have the women, you know, and they do that type of stuff. But they're really into the race scene. They're into the stunts. And uh, somebody my age and older or a little younger, you got to admit, these kids can ride bikes better than us any day of the year. But that's them. And that's the type of clubs they want to be a part of. And I do see a decline in people wanting to be a part of, say, a 99% or a 1% club. The numbers are, they have to be way down. Because I go on the, I once did a poll where only 30% supported motorcycle clubs. Everybody else wants to be independent. They got their own lives to live. They got to pay their bills. And it's not like when I, you know, when I started out where that was everything, man. You wanted to be in that club. So it was really interesting reading this article. Even though it applied to, say, a dirt bike club or an enduro club, an off-road club or a racing club, it really does apply to the club scene as a whole. Nowadays, especially the hardcore stuff, people are not willing to risk their freedom. Back then it was, okay, this is what we do, this is the game, we made our choice, let's do this thing. There wasn't a lot of rats back then, not a lot of rats, and when there was, people got, you know, it was taken care of. But nowadays, if you ever notice, and that's where I kind of get peed when the cops talk about this kind of stuff is, well, you know, let's put this one in witness protection or that one in witness protection, why? Why? The clubs ain't going to risk themselves over some rat. They're not going to do that. There's too much technology out there that can get somebody busted in a heartbeat. What you used to be able to do, you can't do anymore today. I think everybody would agree with that, wouldn't you? You cannot do what you used to today. It's a totally different ball game. But People, you know, people are so eager when they do get caught up. And this is one thing I never understood. They want to be tough. They want to be getting uh, the rep that goes with that patch. They want to go out there, do a couple hustles. Next thing you know, every guy who gets busted. And they're singing like Tweety Birds. That's the sad state of affairs. But that's the way people think now. It's about I and not we. It's not about living the scene 24-7. It's about what can I get out of the patch instead of what can I do to help the patch as a whole. So I can understand a lot of some stuff that I say is foreign to younger ones. I do get uh, a lot of emails, a lot of questions, and most of the time I'll shove them over to Black Dragon because I don't like talking to protocol crap. Because let's face it, what I know is old. It's real old. That's the only I can talk from experience on that type of stuff, but I can't talk about what's going on today. And I have to admit, some of the ways I think are still gang-based. Because that's what I knew growing up was gang stuff. And I do notice that a lot of people move from the gangs and the clubs. And that's why you see a lot of what you do today. Uh, and again, it's only a few people out of the freaking many. But that's the attitude you see in some people. But that has nothing to do with the way the club scene actually works. And, you know, they get tagged by these cops all the time. And I think that's why I like doing Corey Graff's Wall of Shame is because we're able to, hey, look at what you guys are doing. And you have the nerve to say, hey, this club is bad. Or that case down in Texas, man. It's like, what the hell? The state granted that concealed carry. But because the guy was, and he did everything right. But because he was wearing a Banditos cut, he is now a criminal. 
you can actually get some hope in that appellate, uh, you know, decision. You know, they were talking about, okay, we can't make those calls until after the trial. But it was kind of like the appellate court was saying to the trial court, you know what? This ain't cool. There's too many questions here. But the state granted him that CCW, he wasn't a criminal. He was only a criminal when he wore a patch again. So that's the reason why I like doing the wall of shame is, you know, you got cases like that or like, you know, that blow your mind. But then you got Leo doing all this nasty stuff. And it mostly has to do with uh, sexual crap. They freaks. That's what I call them freaks. Because that's what they are is freaks. But going back to the interest in motorcycle clubs, I think it's only because of the internet that you see a lot of interest. But I can almost bet 90% of the people are not a part of clubs. They don't want nothing to do with clubs. It's only a small percentage now because of the way people think nowadays. There's so much more to them. Like again, paying the bills, taking care of the family. And this is something that hit me in the nuts real hard. Because over on Facebook or, you know, sometimes on YouTube, my other platforms, Instagram, you know, I might show a, a hot babe, man. And I remember in the day, man, with Easy Riders, we were tearing that stuff out. The David Mann, the freaking pictures of the monthly biker babe who was on the cover. And now they go and say, well, you know, I got a wife at home. Uh, I'm not really interested. And I'm, I, I'm dumbfounded, dumbfounded by that. Then, on the flip side, it was interesting. I got somebody who was on the comment section that said, well, you don't like Harleys, you don't like drunks, you don't like uh, some other stuff. And it was like, you know what? No, I don't like uh, drunks when they drive, if you would listen to me. Or I don't like drunks when you walk into a bar and they're too busy poking at you and stuff. Yeah, most of the people that I know will turn around and slap them guys. But according to them, it's like, well, you know, you're not into the outlaw biker lifestyle. How can you say that? Well, a lot of guys I know will turn around and slap them too. As far as Harley concerned, you know, and I'll answer that question, is I give criticism because it's right in front of you. It has nothing to do with not liking their product. When I And that's funny. When people listen to these videos, they get out what they think they heard. They don't listen to it 100%. They just make it a determination after one damn sentence. Harley has a good bike, but the company is being ran into the ground. Everybody seen the rewire plan? That's going to drive that company out of business. But I'm the dick for talking about it. That's who I call those Harley cheerleaders, by the way. <laughs> yep, the Harley cheerleaders. Those are, you know, that's the older type of thinking. Now, the younger type of guys, they don't care if they have a Harley or not. They actually call it the grandpa bike, the Harley Davidsons now. Because everybody's on rockets. And can you blame them? Who loves going 160 miles an hour in a couple seconds? Damn good bikes. So, you know, that's my opening and stuff. Let's get into uh, the news. And I'm going to read that article. I think we'll go over the article a little bit. But it's a five-page article. So we'll, you know, skim through it and stuff. And you'll basically get the idea. So... Let's get into some news, shall we? we? We got a funny one out of England. You guys in England are some funny fuckers. I, I gotta say that. <laughs> Don't forget, MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. You can listen to live music right now. And we're not talking about that free and independent stuff, man. We're talking license and everything, baby. We got everything over there. Okay, here we go. This is sent in to uh, me by Long Rider. Again, he's a longtime listener. Uh, thanks for all the donations that you've given us, uh, Long Rider, to, uh, to 
support the show. Again, like I said, a lot of this has to do with different type of clubs that hmm, many people probably didn't hear of, but it has a lot of correlation to 99%, 1%. And I'm sure as we go along, uh, if you're in the chat room, point out some of, uh, you know, the differences and point out some of the cor that correlates to what's going on now. Uh, the c decline of motorcycle club. Are motorcycle clubs dying? Some would argue yes. Like I said, when I did that poll, only 30% supported it. Almost every club has seen a decline in membership. A few clubs have folded due to the lack of interest, dwindling funds, increased cost, aging members, and other factors that eventually bring the club to its knees. The club's engine seized and it was tearfully abandoned by the side of the road. It's interesting they bring that up, and the reason why I say that is, with a lot of clubs that just start off, it's like hell just to get to the five-year mark. Maybe sometimes it's mismanagement of the club by not following the bylaws. People lose interest. It, you know, they got this, uh, how can I say it, uh, this honeymoon type of period where everybody's gun ho for the first year. Then it's like, damn, man, this is becoming a freaking draw on what I'm trying to do with my personal life and my family. It's hard to make mandatory runs to other club parties all the time, the money that's involved. So that might be one factor that's really taken away from club membership. Here's a quote. While I belong to a couple of brand model associations in the past, I've only been a member of a formal MC for about four years. It's an enduro race orientated club, which God knows those are suffering right now. Those are really suffering. Uh, you can take, say, how can I put it? Like the Jack Pine Gypsies out of Sturges. It's that type of club. He's not talking about the clubs that we know. Uh, it was established in 71 and hosting several race and poker run events annually. We celebrated our 50th anniversary next year. In truth, we may already be dead, but nobody wants to admit it. And this is from Brian England, off-road racer and club organizer, talking about that. If it was established in 71, it was hosting several races. And that's the first thing with clubs, man, when you're not holding events, you're not going to events. The interest is kind of dying out. Popular uh, rally speaker, author, and humorist Jack Ripe wrote, Clubs aren't dying, their members are dying. The average BMW rider is 234 years old. Millennials don't join anything. The club vacancies go unfilled. And this has to apply not just to millennials, because I know they get a kick in the ass all the time. But also, the, I would have to argue the Z generation more. They're not interested. Like I say, they got other things going on. They're partying, you know, different ways away from the club. And as soon as something goes wrong within the club, they're gone. There is no sense of, quote, to hell with this. I may be dead by 2 p.m. so anything goes anymore. The new thought is, I paid to attend this event, so entertain me. My God, I've never heard something better than that one, man. It used to be balls to the walls, take it over that, you know, look at the cliff, then take it right over it. And that's kind of like what I try to do with the show. But it just ain't like that no more. It's Like I said earlier, it's about I and not we. The reason why clubs are on the decline is hugely complex. I don't claim to have a crystal ball that gives me the answer. Society is changing. By God, it is. Most writers don't join clubs anymore. Instead, they prefer to do their own thing. Again, I can't agree. <laughs> I agree big time right there, man. I can't agree more, man. 
And that came from the uh, community marketing expert with BMW Clubs and GS Giants Guru. I'd be interested in hearing uh, from somebody that maybe runs a, a hog organization or, hey, even Abate. What is the membership like in those organizations? And is it an older demographic than the younger kids? At a club meeting or at a rally, members could socialize and share information, kick the tires. That was one of the best things about a club was everybody working on the bikes. Sitting there bullshitting, getting drunk or getting high, talking women. You know, that was a bonding experience was working on the bikes together and that hardly ever happens. Uh, swap lies over a campfire. Oh man, the, the bonfires, those were the best things. After a weekend of partying and just sitting by the fire at night, uh, share a few beers and those two, uh, those face to face interactions established a bond. Clubs charged a membership fee, which opened the door to an exclusive group. You get, became part of something special. Your investment entitled uh, you to uh, club clothing, pins, patches, and perhaps a small discount on gear through your local dealer. Again, he's talking about different kind of club, but I think it pertains to 99 and one percenters too. If you wanted to ride with the group, you joined the club. Of course, with those other ones, you got the hang around. Well, with most of them, you know, most of the legit ones. And you know what? I ain't going to even say legit or not legit, but with most clubs, you got hang around, you got prospect and all that stuff. Uh, if you wanted to go to the rally, you joined the club. Clubs, and that would be saying, hey, you want to party with them? You got to join the club. Uh, clubs com uh, uh, competed in uh, riding events, raised money for charities, raised wi uh, rider awareness, and promoted safe riding practices. Now, they still do. You know, the original one percenters, they were actually racers. And the reason why, and this is where the outlaw thing comes in. Now, the cops are going to tell you that it was, well, they want to deal this, they want to do this illegally. No. The outlaw thing was the racers didn't want to keep going to the AMA-sanctioned events. So they started holding their own events. Next thing you know, the AMA is calling them outlaw events. Learn your history. Clubs are feeling the pinch because people just aren't as willing to go to a club event. And why go to a, an event when you can simply hit your buddies up on Facebook from the couch? Boy, has the internet and social media changed everything. I know that. Uh, meet up on a Saturday morning and then actually find people if you want to talk to them. You had to go hang out with someone or go to a shop to learn about our bikes maintenance events or anything else important to a rider seems to me that no one is doing that nowadays brian england again what about you know what i gotta ask a question to the club members does that ring true to you how is your participation in the club are you finding it harder and harder for people that want to attend uh, the events without having to make it mandatory events Really interested to hear that. The old way a club gathered members and kept them engaged doesn't seem to be working. I have to agree, uh, and especially with this next one. Today, people rely on Facebook or Twitter or social media to give us connections to our sport. We de uh, develop internet friendships. We organize rides via email or text message. We substitute the face-to-face -face interactions we get at a club meeting. So damn true. So damn true. Uh, the internet can be a blessing and it can be a curse. You see a lot of clubs that actually start on the internet. And those are the ones that people refer as pop-up clubs. See, there's this tug-of-war between... The way things used to be compared to the way things are now. The way people think. These younger guys are more socially inept. 
And so they build things online. Without regard to what the purpose of the club is, getting together, most of the time all they do is spend time on the internet or they want to expand their stuff worldwide and they're using the internet to do that. We organize rides via email or text message, and you know what? Everybody can admit, you know, the text messages. I wish it was back to the days where you needed a quarter for a payphone. This new way seems uh, great on the surface, but those social media connections don't lend themselves to keeping a motorcycle club afloat. And that's why you'll see a lot of these internet clubs freaking just fold, or clubs that went through the internet to get a club started fold, because they don't have any personal interaction. Yeah, it might be great to say, hey, we got chapters all over the United States. But do you guys get together in one spot? Do you do nationals? Do you do regionals? Do you try to run it that way? Or is there the famous power struggle all the damn time? Another reason why clubs are choking on a chicken bone, as he says, is politics. You're damn right. This includes the politics of society and the politics of the club, especially nowadays with politics, boy. It goes without saying that discussing society politics within the club is a surefire way to cause division. Politics are a minefield that everyone must avoid. It was very interesting if you ever watched Dibber's uh, video on the uh, Jerusalem uh, or Israel visit. That is one of the nastiest freaking places in the world right there. It's nothing but fighting and killing. And it's always uh, the Jews against the freaking Muslims or the Christians. But they have clubs there that they put that aside. And that's a shining example to the rest of the world. And the MC is you got to put all that stuff aside. Because when it comes to politics, hey, listen. I have my political views, I talk about them on the show, but then you'll see everybody come back that don't agree with it and, you know, a big fight starts and politics is, politics and religion was supposed to never be discussed in an MC. Us, we're a radio show, so we're going to discuss that kind of stuff. And it's up to the listeners to either get in the discussion or tell me to go flip the bird, you know what I say? But bringing that stuff in the, the clubs, bad news, man. Uh, we're in a club because of our love of motorcycles. Allowing politics to creep in is like filling your bike's gas tank with diesel. The gauge says the tank is full, but the bike won't run. What a way to put it right there, man. What a way to put it. And then, then there's another thing, you know, politics in the club itself. It's always funny. People want positions so bad. I don't get it. I don't get it. They fight each other to get a president job or a freaking vice president position. And then the politics, you know, breaks you up into a group, you know, different groups, different factions, when you're all supposed to be the same thing. And it's funny, you know, when we talk out bad, there was only like three reasons why you used to be thrown out bad. And that was, you know, ratting out, turning on a brother, stealing from him, and stealing his old lady without permission. Nowadays, man, all you have to do is piss on a bush and you're thrown out bad. That's how bad the club politics has gotten nowadays. And then people have to wonder why, you know, others don't want to be a part of that stuff. It's drama. My God. So, you know... I'll put the link to this uh, PDF, that way you guys can see the full article online. Uh, Very interesting stuff, and I want to thank Long Rider for throwing this uh, in for me. But let's go to uh, the union leader out of New Hampshire. Bike week kicks off, baby! But they have to make sure they say, with mask and safe distancing. You know, the media is they're just going nuts on uh, Sturges still to this day. Uh, they're reporting COVID cases out of Minnesota, out of, New, uh, what is it, Nebraska. And they just want to use that against people. Unreal. 
what, you're not supposed to go on with your life anymore? Now, I understand personal responsibility to avoid this COVID crap. But you can't get dic dictatorial with people's lives. It has to go on. Laconia, delayed by the coronavirus pandemic and smaller by design, the 97th edition of the Laconia Motorcycle uh, Week got off the starting line Saturday with a mass socially distanced run around Lake Winnipesky. The Peter Marcus Memorial Run, which raised money for local and statewide charities, I hope the Leo heard that, you know, raising money for local and statewide charities, that's what mainly bikers do, uh, begin and ended at the Naswa Resort with 95 riders, about one-third the usual numbers. Uh, president of the Laconia Motorcycle Week Association, all the riders, including the New Hampshire State Police motorcycle contingent that led to run, posed for a mask-up photo before getting on their bikes and trikes, taking a right on the Route 3 and heading north, waving to Hope Margris, Peter's 95-year-old widow. After looking over the area before coming to Naswa, Laconia Fire Chief uh, Kurt Betty said, well, people are doing a good job wearing masks, social distancing, and observing other state restrictions. Now, I hate to bring this up. Laconia, mostly the liberal deal. Sturges, that was in a Republican state. So they're going to be comparing the two of these and how it was done. So expect that in the, the days to come, how they're going to freaking... You know, pump up, well, this is how a good rally was held where Sturges was bad. That's what's going to happen. Uh, Betty said Motorcycle re Week 2020, his 22nd is different, but everything looks different this year. Well, I think we have the resources in place to deal with any health and safety issues that come up. But there's a lot of unknowns. We really don't know what to expect. My understanding was COVID took two weeks to uh, pop up. You know, maybe unless you're showing, showing signs right there and then, but doesn't you have to wait two weeks before you see something? Uh, and that's what's going to happen with uh, the Sturgis stuff. You give it the two-week mark and you're going to start seeing stuff all over. Uh, Ward 5 City Councilor Bob Mamel said the city is hoping for a, quote, decent turnout, but a subdued one. For that reason, the city council withheld motorcycle week property use permits and vendors licenses and prohibited centerline parking on Lakeside Avenue specifically to minimize people congregating. So are you, if you guys are out in Laconia, let me know how it's going right now. I'd be really interested in uh, seeing that. Now let's go to uh, WHSB3. Uh, and this is about that guy in Shenandoah that made a post or his employee made a post about Black Lives Matter and they jerked his uh, company away from him. Sad state it's of affairs. Permanently this week. And now community members are working to get a former dealership owner back into the business. WHSB's Chelsea Church reports. The slate inside when you walk in is the slate from my mom and dad's train depot roof growing up. Bob Ladd designed and built the building where the Shenandoah Harley Davidson dealership sits, which he owned from January 1998 to October of 2011. And over the years, Shenandoah Harley Davidson became more than just a dealership. We used to do memorials here. We've done weddings here. We, we've done celebrations of life here. Uh, you know, people got attached to this. It was really a part of their life. And now with the dealership closed, community members have started a petition to get Ladd back in the business, so far reaching over 1,000 signatures. We like to have possibly four to 5,000 to make an impression to Harley Davidson, to show them how important it is not only to have a Harley Davidson dealership back here, but also to have Bob Ladd back here. Ladd said he's doing his best to get the dealership back up and running. It won't sit here empty, you know, but he'll, uh... He'll do something with it, you know. I, I mean, I, I'd, I'd like to see a Harley dealership back here. 
But if it, if it all falls through, you know, I'll support whatever he does. Ladd says he's ready to continue serving the Valley. In Stanton, Chelsea Church, WHSV. I say put in your own dealership, man. Do uh, used bikes and different model bikes. Screw what Harley has to say. That was the stupidest thing I ever heard of. You know, it was messed up. I'll talk about it in final thoughts. Now, going over to England, I believe it is. Quote, I was gobsmacked. I never heard that one. I couldn't believe my eyes. Car left sticking out of Salford building after bizarre crash. And if you're over on the radio, get on over here to YouTube or Facebook, boy. You crazy over there, man. You just see a truck hanging out of the Hells Angel uh, clubhouse. Uh, a car left sticking out of the building in Salford following a bizarre crash has bewildered residents. And if you see it, you you be bill. How did it happen? Uh, the incident happened just after 11 p.m. on Liberal uh, Pool Road. Uh, pictures taken last night showed half of the vehicle inside the Hells Angels Manchester building. The area was cordoned off while police and fire crews attended the scene. It is understood the car was later removed from the building. Hey, I would have just, you know, kept it there. <laughs> it would have been fun. Make a bar out of the back end. Uh, it was inside the uh, Hells Angels Manchester building. The area was cordoned off while police and fire crews attended. It is understood the car was later removed again. Lorna Hoy, who witnessed the scene shortly after the crash, said, quote, it looked like it had been re." In reverse, it was a pickup type car. <laughs> it's different over there. Uh, yeah, that sucker went right through the brick wall right there, baby. <laughs> Had to be in reverse. Uh, there was uh, just a few people stood around. It was uh, all taped off, and a, I had to cross the road to get past, she said. Uh, but yeah, come on over and check this one out. It is uh, wow. <laughs> Uh, let's go over to Canberra by Brinkwire. President of the Nomads Bikey Gang is arrested. He's arrested for his alleged involvement in three separate shootings. Michael Wayne Clark, 34, has been accused of supplying guns used in three shootings in the Batemans Bay Area last year. The Canberra-based bikey boss was arrested in a car parked on Wednesday wearing a black hoodie and blue track pants. He is due to appear in the ACT Magistrate's Court on Thursday, where NSW police were, uh, will apply for his extradition to NSW to face charges related to firearms and directing a criminal group. Following his arrest, raided homes in Kingston and Kamba, where they found two motorbikes, a gun, cash, prohibited drugs, jewelry, and various bikey per paraphernalia including patches nine others have also been arrested and faced 49 charges now two oh yeah choreographs wall of shame and officer gabriel watt you are now in the wall of shame arrested in los alamos charged with dui and abating police ah huh. uh Gabriel Wett, 39, he's been charged on Wednesday at around 5 p.m. Los Alamos Police Corporal David Rattleman responded to Sandia and 44th Street for a possible DUI. Corporal David Bowe spoke to the reporting party who indicated that the driver of a black Cadillac with temporary plates was driving erratically. And appeared to be intoxicated. No, they wouldn't do that. No. Only bikers do that, right? Officer Rattleman made contact with Watt, who was unresponsive, in the driver's seat of the vehicle with the transmission and drive. Rattleman knocked on the vehicle and tried to get Watt's attention. He tried to get into the vehicle through the passenger door to place the vehicle in part, but it was locked. He woke Rat uh, Watt by shaking him and told him to put the car in park. Uh, Rattleman's report states that began to drive forward and almost struck uh, the patrol unit parked in front of him. Randleman reported that he got Watt to stop and then reach into the vehicle, put it in park, and pressed the ignition button to stop the motor. He noted a strong odor of intoxicating litter. <laughs> 
yes, you're in the wall of shame, dummy. Uh, well, let's do one more. Honolulu police or Honolulu uh, police uh, officer awaiting trial for domestic abuse. The woman reported that an HPD officer assaulted her, destroyed her phone, and arrested her. Uh, let's see here. He's facing charges. Yeah, uh, is among the defendants whose trials are delayed. Yes, we actually covered this one, I believe. Officer Michael Rourke's case is one of several domestic abuse cases involving uh, Honolulu. Police officers referred to the prosecuting attorney's office uh, in 2019, although four were accepted for prosecution. Rourke, 34, was arrested last uh, September following a 2019 incident with a 42-year-old woman in which he allegedly shoved her by the neck and destroyed her cell phone. Yes. So, it was delayed because of COVID. But, anyway, we're going to get into uh, my final thoughts. Let me know what you guys think so far about the, the news of the day. Boy, that thing with the freaking Hells Angel car going in the back went through the wall. My God, we're living in really interesting times. Bigger syndicate cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to baggersyndicatecycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Man, that was actually a good segment of Biker News. Very interesting stuff, as you can see. Uh, I wanted to give a quick reminder. When we get going on MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com, uh, there is going to be an app that you can download on your phone, take it with you, plug it right in the car, listen to the tunes on the radio, beat any AM, FM uh, radio that you can get. But with the show, what's going to happen is after this one goes on air at about 9 o'clock Central Standard Time is when the Wake and Bake Show, baby, is going to be going on. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of different talk on it. A lot of different uh, music uh, put in there with it. Yes, I will be going live as soon as I figure out the damn software. And there will be call-ins. I believe a good radio sh show is going to have call-ins and all that good stuff. So, again, give me some time to get used to it. Then we'll get into the live stuff. Uh, but I think with this video going back to the subjects with you know motorcycle clubs less interest and stuff i think the guy really nailed a lot with what's going on in the scene right now yeah he might have been talking about hog stuff or racing enduro type of groups but it applies all across the board you know that's my personal belief and like he says it's different now the internet has really changed the way that we internet interact as people and i'm not just talking about bikers man i'm talking everybody everybody it's about facebook did you ever notice when somebody unfriends you you're like what the hell you just unfriended me it's like man they broke up in real life you know you even got people breaking up with each other over text messages now it's no longer a face-to-face -face deal and i believe that's really affected today's society and with that effect in today's society, it also affects the biker scene. The Again, the internet as a tool can be great if it's done right. Meaning if you're an independent, you join, you know, some of these groups. You know, by the way, we got bikers and brotherhoods that we uh, sponsored. The group's almost at 13,000 people. Judge and Brian run that one. So go on over there and uh, check it out. Just answer the three quick questions and you're in, I guess. Uh, but it's a great group. You got Judge over there and Brian that runs that show. But it's these groups are a place to go if you're looking for somebody to ride with. I am personally not the one that believes in trying to do the clubs over it. But again, things change and the way I think is out of freaking fashion, I guess, man. I'm going the way of the Harley Davidson, you know, us older guys, you just start aging out and the new ones take over. It's actually kind of scary, man. I'm about to hit 50 years old in a couple years and it's like, damn, 
yeah, that gives you a big freaking wake up call when you get into that uh, way of doing things. Uh, but, you know, I said a lot of what I had to say about uh, the decline of motorcycle clubs in the monologue. Uh, so take a listen to that again. Uh, going on to uh, the other stories of Laconia, I guarantee there's going to be a lot of comparison to the way they did things compared to the way Sturges did. And it all comes down to politics, baby. If you don't believe that, just watch. Just watch how the media covers this crap. And for one, New Hampshire's a battleground state, so you can guarantee that they're going to be all over this one uh the shannon doa harley davidson man uh he was in he was one of the guys that were in a fight about the confederate flag before him and harley didn't get along and then there was this post made about black lives matter he claimed it was an employee which you know what it barry mel could have been but now they're getting the position going with harley personally i say stay away from harley man Open your own deal. Get uh, multiple lines in there. Or do use bike sales. You know, if Harley don't want you, screw them. They got a different way of thinking any damn way now. Uh, he kind of looks like he's a down-and-out biker. He's a working man. They don't care about you, so why the hell care about them? Go with different br brands, man. Piss them off. You know, go with Honda or go with freaking Kawasaki, Suzuki, uh, you know, Can-Am, whatever you can get in there and just thumb your nose at them. That's what I would do. You know, if you cannot freaking express your viewpoint without people coming back at you, something's wrong, man. Me, I talk about it all the time on this show, and I really don't give a damn what people think what I have to say. I don't care if they're calling me racist. I don't call you know care of this. If you're going to call me something, at least have the cojones to come on the show and debate me about it. You know, a lot of people are big talk. Come on, I got a hater channel, for Christ's sakes. I love it. You know, uh, like I said, you know, you haven't made it until you got a bunch of haters. Uh, this is something that you have to have thick skin with. A lot of people, you know, they ask me about doing some uh, creator work, uh, how they can start, say, a radio station or how they can start talking about the club or the bike scene. And the first thing I'm always going to tell you is you got to let the criticism roll off the back of your shoulders, man. You can't take that stuff personal or you're not going to freaking make it doing what we do, me, Black Dragon, other guys. You're not. You know, you got a lot of other channels that make subtle, uh, subtle hints towards you. You know who the hell they are. You know what they're talking about. And it's like, really, dude? Any freaking way, we can go back and forth all you want. You know, I don't care what this guy is or that guy is. It is what it is. You know, but they make them little hints back and forth. And it's like, dude, shut the hell up. All you guys just shut up. That's the way you have to think if you're going to get into this business. You know, you're going to have see creators go off and it's like, damn, yeah, man, you know, you better get that thick skin because that's going to be keep on coming. As you grow, haters and the haters and haters get more and more and more. If you're ever on the YouTube station during a live or uh, a premiere, whatever the hell they call it, you'll see before the video even starts, there's dislikes. And it's like, man, get a freaking life, dude. You know what? At least have the balls to listen to the material before you're a bunch of dicks. <laughs> really, grow up, man. Grow up. But with that Shenandoah thing, what do you guys think, man? I really think he should do something else. I wouldn't give Harley Davidson the you know the time of day. Uh, as far as uh, the 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 one story with the nomads, hey. That's them overseas, baby. That's the way they roll. And if they want to act a fool, they act a fool. And then, again, it's not everybody who does it, but the ones that do overtake the media over there and bring so much competition that they get these freaking draconian laws passed over there. And that's one thing that I'm afraid here in the United States is that's the kind of stuff they want to start doing, you know. Let's go back to the Texas thing. You know, just because he was wearing a bandito patch, they charged him with the crime, even though he had a valid CCW. You know, it blows my mind. I can't get over that one. It's like, how the hell are you going to do that type of stuff? So you just see it creeping in to the United States, what 
say Europe does it real big right now. There's a story out uh, on HarleyLiberty.com where they're trying to charge people just for wearing a shirt now of a club that's banned there. And they outright ban clubs there. And again, I never got that because once they go underground, you don't know who the hell you're dealing with. Uh, so, and then of course, Australia, Canada's doing it. And it's just a matter of time before the United States, uh, you know, watches them and starts doing it to uh, clubs here. Because, quote, they're a criminal organization because a couple guys did something stupid. And next thing you know, they're putting it on every single body. Uh, the wall of shame really speaks for itself, doesn't it? Again, you know, it's funny that one case with the drunk driver and stuff. Yeah, and you wonder why I don't like drunks, stupid idiots. And then, of course, that uh, Honolulu shit. Uh, that's just a continuing story. But again, Corey Graff's getting his stuff together. I've been listening to his demos. I think you guys are going to really love uh, his show. Uh, if you are a creator, I don't care what kind of creator you are. I don't care if it's a biker. I don't care if you're talking cars, whatever you want to do. You can come over and for free, you can come on the uh, radio station with your show. I'll promote you and that type of stuff. That way it gives you a little kick in the butt, get you maybe some people over there, uh, getting, you know, information and contact from you. Uh, I remember talking to Black Dragon the other day saying, you know what, creators got to work together, man. We got to work together and everybody uh, benefits when we work together. So trying to get different type of uh, content on the radio station, different type of talk shows covering different type of things. So if you're interested, info at insanethrottlebikernews.com or you can leave a message over on 847-957-1686 and I'll get back to you. Uh, don't forget again, pound rock on in your comment sections on the platforms. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram. Let's get that Instagram built, man. I'm finally learning how to do it. And you can go over to our Twitter feed and get the news going on over there. With that, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. I say goodbye. Vamos. Adios. Ciao. So long. Get your so you want to know how to support the show? Go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now rock on don't forget to go over to harleyliberty.com get all your motorcycle club news what's happening in the scene we have a new article or articles every single day over at harleyliberty.com and don't forget the sister site bikerlifestylemagazine.com if you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycling news motorcycle rallies and bikers helping the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at BaggerSyndicateCycles.com. Your show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!